Oh. What up, y'all? I'm going to show y'all how to use Slice X like an MPC, man. All right, I like to start off with my samples in Edison. I already got Edison loaded up for time's sake. All right, I'm going to pull in a sample over here that I'm going to have down here that you can download and follow along with me. All right. This is what I do to find tempo songs I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people does this, but if you ain't never done it, then it might help you out. So you want to go up here and uh, let's say we didn't know the BPM to this little sample here, but I do since I made it, but pretend like we don't know. All right, we're going to hit slave to playback. This button right here. This right here is going to play. When I hit the master play panel up here, it's going to play along with the song. See, play. <laughs> See, does that right there. I like to put my snares on the two and four so you can find the BPM, man. You can line it up with your sample. You get close to the BPM so you have an idea. So let's play it. to get those snares to line up a little bit okay so I knew it around 95 but that's what you want to do man that'll help you out with your drum key. that'll help you out with your drum patterns and everything see how they're gonna go with your sample so you can set up a kick you know and if lay out something in a playlist and you will pretty much know how something's gonna kind of sound See what I'm talking about? It's going to line up with this right here. Because you can see the back pattern. That's how we're going to find the BPM. All right, since we know it's kind of lining up, if you had a whole song, like an old school sample, it's not going to line completely up, but you're going to get close to the BPM and have an idea of what the tempo is. So we're going to go up here, click on the properties, the sample properties right here. Right-click this. And we're going to auto detect for short loops. It's on pretty good. Same other ones can vary, man. Uh, if I was using an old sample, I'd use a variable tempo. But we're going to use a quick for short loops. Boom, it's showing us 16 beats and 95.049. So we're going to head accept that. With this thing right here, you want to set your own downbeat. So click on your little regions arrow. Set first downbeat. Set your downbeat. It's going to go to the beginning of the sample. Let's zoom in here and look. Now you see these lines, man? This is going to help you when you're chopping up. See these lines right here are going to line up with your playlist back here, man. See? These darker lines, that's what these are right here. So when you chop up, it's going to chop right on them if you use auto chop. It's going to be real close to them. So let's go over here, here to the first, because I think we need to move this downbeat up a little bit. All right, so zoom in and uh, make sure you got a snap off so I don't snap to the line. Let's pull it up to about right here. You see where the wave starts? Let's look at it and see, because I know this is a kick right here. Um, it's about right on, man. That's what you want to do. You want to see how your stuff's lined up. Now let's put it on snap. Snap to grid here. You see? That right there lined up. That's how you get your tempo, man. It's easy to find it out that way, but it can be hard. It, I mean, it's all over the place with the auto detect, man. So I use variable tempo most of the time with old school, you know, samples, so samples and stuff. But anyways, man, to slice up, we're going to do this right here. Make sure you slide all the way over to the downbeat. And boom. We're going to go up here to the little slice jump. We're going to right click this. 
and a medium slice is pretty good so we're going to use that um it slices to the grid see the four and that's like this right back here on the playlist so if i play it See, they're pretty much online right now. But you want to go over here, let's turn the snap right back off. You want to go over here and zoom in and pull marker two. Go and delete that because your downbeat's going to be your first marker. All right, now zoom in on these and this. Click back on your snap and have it snap to grid. If they're not already snapped to the grid all the way, click on it and it pop to the grid. But it looks like they're pretty much already snapped to the grid. So I think that's already taken care of. It worked right on. But anyways, if you click them, it'll pop to the grid if it's not already snapped to the grid. All right, now we got our sample chopped up, man. That's how I find my BPM with the little slave to tempo right here and uh, see what drum patterns are gonna work with my sample. All right, now we need to go uh, slice X, man. We're gonna load that up. All right, you wanna select your whole sample at the downbeat. You don't wanna select anything before the downbeat. Just wanna select the whole sample. Pull up this, let's pull up slice X. That at? We got Slice X open right here. All right, we want to pull our sample into Slice X. So you want to go to this little drag icon right here, and you want to pull it into Slice X. Pull our sample. Boom. All right, now we got our slices in Slice X. Let's look at the piano row here. See? They're right on, man. They're snapped to your grid. That's how you want your slices. Unless you're manually slicing or whatever. But if you want to auto chop, man, that's the way to go. Look, it's right on now. See? A drum beat was lining up too. Anyway, let's get out of that. All right. And slice X, since we're holding down, I'm triggering this with my MIDI keyboard. See, you hear that? It's not, you got to hold it down for it to go. That's kind of like node on in an MPC. If you use an MPC, that'd be node on, hold it down to go. But we want it to play all the way through on one hit. So you want to go right here to the options, drop down menu. You want to open up the state file. Once you got that open, man, you want to go to the volume to staining. That's going to make it where it plays the chop all the way through in one hit. So open that up. Boom, we got that open. Now I'm going to trigger a chop. See? Plays all the way through now. But look. They're overlapping each other. So we got to take care of that, man. You want to go up here you might want to go ahead and turn auto dump off because that's going to dump every time you move a slice marker region or anything that's going to make a new pattern in your piano row so go ahead and turn that off and if you don't already have this on turn on kb input this right here it's going to make it where you can use your typing keyboard and that's how we're going to fix our slices man all right make sure you have that on and come down here you see this right here you know the first slice just right here is your cut box man this is like mpc would be in mono mode like everything's cutting each other off so we want to have set every slice to the same cut group so with your mouse you want to hover your cursor over the cut group box you're going to slide up with your mouse wheel as you go over you're going to use your left and right keys on your keyboard your arrows you want to slide up with your mouse on one and slide over and go up one one slide up go up one if you had a huge sample crap takes a long time man. i mean but you get fast at it after you do it a lot 
But we need to send in something to image line to get on that, man, to fix that so we can have that fixed to sell them all to one cut group. Anyways, you'll get fast at it, man. I got a crappy mouse right now, so I don't know how good to go through. So I just go through them real fast and slide up and go right. So, I mean, you can come back and fix the ones you ain't got. Say so you can just go through them real quick. Sometimes you'll hit them. You'll miss a couple, man, but you can go back through and fix it. Slide back down. All right, now they're all set to the same cut group. Now you listen to them. They're not going to be overlapping each other. See? They're good to go, man. And that's pretty much it, man. You got this up here. This is going to be your main pitch. You know, down's going to be slower, man. Then you got, you know, your Kanye West on. And all this stuff, man, it's not as technical as it looks, man. I, when I first started using NFL, I thought, man, this is like techno's crap. It, it's not techy at all, man. It's actually real simple if you really just mess with it a couple times. If y'all want me to do some more in-depth video on that, I can. But I'll show you something real quick. Like these right here, it's like just putting a filter on your sample chops. Like a high-pass filter. Put on like one time. See? They're all set to the same one. If you go over here to this little box, you can change that and have every, you know, you can change these up here and have like a low pass on one chop. It's like I set this to, this chop to three, just right here. I can set that to low pass. See? And it's right here still. So still on the high pass because it's set to one the same thing as your cut groups man and one other thing for all my mpc element users out there man if you want to map out if you have like 16 chops map them out real quick go to your regions drop down menu right here boom pull it open and you assign to mpc paths and i assign it out if you just had 16 chops you can go in there and manually assign them to the different numbers but uh, yeah, and for trigger and whatever else, I never use that. So, but just a little tip for the NPC guys out there. But uh, yeah, man, it's easy as that, man. If y'all want me to do some more in-depth videos on Slice X, then uh, let me know in the comments, man. I hit y'all up later.